So now I'm going to talk about how to do some spatial analysis in R using some geographic shape files. What I have here is a zip file that I provided on my website that has not only the R script that I'm going to use, but also three different sets of shape files. And I've also included a QGIS file, so you can open that up in that software if you want to see what my preliminary work. So here I've got the Milwaukee City Line, which is made, I actually converted it from the polygon from the Census Places Tiger Line file. Here I've got robberies, which are a point file, shape file. This I actually geocoded myself. I took city of Milwaukee data for um, address locations of, of different types of crime, in this case robberies, put them together from all the zip codes which were separate, put them into one file and geocoded it. And then this is census data for the 661 block groups in the city of Milwaukee in 2014. And uh, so this is from the U.S. Census. It's a uh, 2014 American Community Survey five-year estimates and what it has is a few variables that I've made as well as an index of deprivation that I made and that is a four variable index made of four components um, myself I use principal components analysis and it's a combination of the unemployment rate percentage of SNAP benefits recipients um, the percentage of adults without a high school diploma and then also the poverty rate so that's an index that I made myself and I also included a couple of variables as well so these are all in here, and this paper was actually tied into, a, this was tied into a paper I did a few years ago in the Journal of Urban Affairs where I looked at uh, rent, uh, housing tenure and renters and deprivation and crime. So I kind of modified the data. You can see that a lot of these end in two because I, I modified it and, and uh, saved it separately, but these are the data we're going to work with. So first I'm going to show you in QGIS, I've got sort of an end result in, in GIS. And I always have to make the point that a lot of things you should do in GIS, using R without any GIS software is a lot of times very difficult. If you ever see code written, it's got a lot of text, a lot of projections, a lot of various components in there. I do suggest starting in GIS, getting a good database, setting projections, and then moving to R for your statistical work. But I'm going to do it mostly in R. But this is the map. This is the city of Milwaukee. I've got the outline, the city line. These are the block groups, and then each dot is one of these robberies from 2014. Now, I made a choropleth map where red is the highest deprivation and white is the lowest, and it's separate. You can kind of see that the near north side and near south side are the highest deprivation rates, which you'd expect, as well as a lot of robberies. We're going to statistically t test, you know, whether these, you know, are more than just a visual cluster uh, a little bit later. But right now you can see a lot of robberies on the north side, a lot of robberies on the south side, but interestingly enough, a lot of robberies on the east side. So that's, you know, more college students, maybe a little more upper income. And then this gives us an economic relationship we want to test. You could say, well, is crime tied to high deprivation, where there's a lot of perhaps people in economic conditions, you know, who want to become perpetrators, or is it people who are higher income, lower deprivation, who will be attracting targets? And you can look into the literature on social disorganization versus routine activities theory. There's You can dig into the, the underlying determinants and the research, but right now we can see that there's clusters in both high deprivation and low deprivation areas. So this is a pretty nice looking core map, and GIS is very good at doing that. We're going to do it in R. So I've got all the packages you might need here. The, these two, SP and RGDL, are the, one of the biggest, most important ones. I like GIS tools. Uh, but at the same time, we are going to make our own math, which means we, maps, we need to choose colors and the class intervals. So we're going to actually choose how to cut it up into different colors and what colors to use. So we need a package for that. We're going to load them. And you see here, you know, simply if you have to install them, you can take out the hashtag and do it yourself. But right now, I am going to. Uh, just load the packages that I already have. So we are going to read and create the data. Make sure you change your directory. This is the file that I zipped. Mine's always an F, but you might need to change that. So I'm going to set the working directory. Then I'm going to have read OGR, which is the standard uh, pr uh, command to open a shape file. You can see the name of the shape file in quotes. Um, a lot of times older texts would have uh, read shape poly or something like, but that's actually older. This is what you should use. Now we're going to open up these three shape files, robberies, city line, and the data. And so we're going to run that. Notice here it's it's reading some things as strings. And so I left this. I did not change this because I want to fix the problem as we go. These are not numbers. So this uh, this air, land area, if we want to divide by land area, we're going to have to change that to a numeric value. This as a string, you cannot divide by text. So that's telling us this, it's going to come up later. Now, always check the data. 
Always look at the head, look at the first five observations to see if that's what you want. The data look good, there's no errors. And also look at the column names, you can see what variables you have as well as what position they are in. So here's the vacancy rate, which I included. Um, you can imagine that crime is tied to vacancies. And then median income, Y is income. So again, this looks like a number, but it's actually text. All right, so here we have all our variables. Um, you can see that the land area, some, some Milwaukee block groups include parts of Lake Michigan, so the water area is quite big, but we're not going to use it. You've got the uh, latitude and longitude as well as the deprivation index. One thing, I have geo ID 9. I always label 9. In ArcGIS, you have to convert a text ID to a numeric value. And for whatever reason, when I was learning GIS, I, uh, it took me nine tries to get it right. So I always label it nine, because that's the one I wound up working with so much. So a lot of times you see that, that variables have names because of something that happened and for whatever reason. So they look good. GeoID, this is unique to each block group. This is the codes. 55 is Wisconsin, and it's got city and county information. And then the names, we can see that they're here. And importantly, deprivation, which only has 10 characters, got cut off, is column 7. So we're going to need to remember that that's number 7. Now I'm going to plot the maps individually using the plot command. If we run it, they're going to they're be underneath each other. Here's Milwaukee. Here's the block groups. I'm going to get rid of that. Here's the robberies in the same place, and those are all given pluses as points, and that's just default symbology. Here, this looked a little different. This is a different projection. It's a different size. We're going to have to fix that. All right, so I'm going to plot all three in one. All right, so I this command, pop PRR, MF row, this tells you how to do rows and columns. And as a group, this is row, comma, column. One row, three columns. This will give us all three maps in a line. Then we're going to plot city line first. Then we're going to call a command to make a new graph that does not superimpose the old one. So new equals false means don't put it on top. New equals true is, is to superimpose. Then we're going to plot robberies. We're going to do the same thing for data. So if I do this, we have them all side by side. You can see that this is a different projection. The south side does not go as far south, etc. So we're going to have to fix that a little bit later. But these are our three shape files plotted out. Now, to, to show you this issue, we are going to check the projections. And this is the text. And this is one thing why I always say use GIS, because sometimes tutorials will say to type this in as part of your code, and it's ridiculous. So I could set this in QGIS, but I did not. All right. the, these look good because you can set the CRS for the layer, which is not part of the actual file, right? So uh, this, the actual underlying projection is different, and we're going to fix that later. Now, just to show you this, there's something called slots. These shape files have a number of slots. The data are only part of a shape file. Polygons and plot order, the bounding box, and then the projection is the information about how the data are projected onto the screen. So that is an important thing to think about. And that vexes all geographers. It, it's problems. That sometimes you think you fix it, it comes back. But always think about the projections. So we're going to fix that later. Right now we're going to make a variable DEPR for deprivation. Data, dollar sign gives us that column. You don't have to do the, the data one. Um, I'll show you that sometimes if you go to data.data, .data, right, that, that's actually the, just the the, the sheet of variables, but this is the deprivation column. And then these two lines turn the not a number and not available to zeros, but there were no blank cells. But th that's one way to turn blank cells to zero. Or if you want to, you can omit them. If you want them to be non-zero, you can get rid of them entirely. But right now, I'm just going to make a, a variable called deprivation. And now I'm going to show you a histogram of it to show you the distribution. And before I do that, if I, if I don't do this, I am going to just have my three columns, and it's waiting for two more. So the, this line is going to turn it back to one row, one column at a time. This is my histogram. You can see it's a little bit skewed. Right? This is the variable that I created right, in an earlier study. So we've got a variable deprivation. We have a good look at our data. We have our, our maps. We know how they're projected. First, we're going to make a choropleth map, which shows deprivation. We've got column 7, and we're going to use spplot, which is the, the command to bring up the corpleth map, and we're going to do it for the seventh column, or deprivation. And this is sort of default stuff. You can see the high values are in the north side and south side here. The low values are dark purple. They're on the edges. And that map matches kind of what we saw in QGIS. But we didn't pick the colors, and we didn't pick how the data are broken down. So we're going to make it a little nicer. We're going to make a nine-color map. 
Nine colors need eight breaks in between, right? If you cut something into two parts, you cut it once. So it's always n minus one cuts. We're going to make a ramp from white to black, and that's the grays. So we're going to make a file or an object called colors. We're going to use the brewer, and it's nine groups, right? And the palette of grays gives us the ramp of white to black. Now we're going to do SP plot again, still column seven. The color regions, right? Where do we want the colors? Those are the nine colors we just made here. We're going to cut it eight times. And we're going to give it a title. Economic Deprivation, Milwaukee 2014. And Maine is what gives us the title, in quotes. So we're going to make the colors, and we are going to make a new graph. And so it's going to turn here, right? And it's got the white to black here. And you can see that that's still higher in the inner city and lower on the east side, lower on the edges of town. So it's a little bit nicer, all right? So we're going to keep that. We're going to make another graph with the other two variables just to look at them. We're going to plot the robberies and the city borders. So first we do the city line. Choose the color of black, and that's in quotes. Line width is four. That's actually fairly thick. So LWD line width is four. Line type is one, and that's a, it's, a, it's a solid line. There's actually, I think, six of these. You can Google it between various dashes and dots and stuff, and you might choose based on your own needs. We make a title of Milwaukee Robberies 2014. Then we're going to add, superimpose, robberies. Now, PCH equals 16 is basically the certain type of dot type. And, and there's a whole table you can Google, but 16 is the certain dots. And um, CEX, this is actually the point size. And so it's a little bit smaller. It's 0.5, right? So if we do this, we're going to get the other two. In the other old projection, we're going to get rid of this projection, but here are the robberies over the borders of the city. And you can see that they're clustered on the south side and north side, and uh, less so way far down by the airport. So we are going to change that projection. We're going to take this, the city line projection, we're going to copy it from robberies. And so we're going to take the robberies projection strength, and we're going to put it into the city line string. And then we're going to exactly copy what we had before. But first, we're going to change that projection. And it's the same thing, it's just a little bit nicer. It's the same projection the others have. It's a little bit skinnier and longer. Right? Now, we're going to add the block groups. We're not going to change the color yet, but we're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to do data column 7, which is deprivation. Right? But we're, we haven't added it yet. And then we're going to have the same title. So we're going to run that. And now we have the block group boundaries across. Okay. So that does not have anything about the type or the, the scale of deprivation. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to make a core plinth map of economic deprivation, and we're going to put the robberies on top of it. So to make a core plinth map, you have to decide, do you cut them into equal groups? Do you do it what visually appealing? I'm going to make breaks one, which is an object. It's class intervals for data, column seven. Remember, deprivation, I'm going to do eight groups. And the style is Jenks natural breaks. It looks for gaps in the data based on the data themselves. And if you do it, it's going to show you they're not equally split, right? Of the 661 block groups, there are a lot of them, fewer at the top and more at the bottom. But they're not equally done. They're done on the natural breaks, according to the Jenks method. So uh, the other thing is we, you have what numbers are the ranges. You don't need how many there are. We're going to get rid of it. And so if you do the dollar sign, you can see that there's more to this. Oops. There's more to it than simply that, and we're going to just take the breaks part of it, right? And we're going to show where the numbers go. So I'm going to make, I'm going to redo it with just those, uh, those cuts. All right. So that's how we cut the data up into nine parts. They're not equal. You could do quantile breaks for that. There's a, uh, you could do a number of different methods for cutting, but I'm choosing the line. I chose the the Jenks method. Right. So I'm going to I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it just show up in the corner here in Arcs in uh, our studio. Take the library of GIS tools and I follow this. I've got choropleth, right? That's the command. This remember, it's not an L, it's choropleth. And the, I start with the data shape file. The variable is the deprivation, and then I'm going to shade it. How do I pick the colors? Well, I break it up according to the breaks I made, and then I take the colors from above, which are those nine grays. So I've got those eight breaks and nine grays, and here's my title, Milwaukee at Deprivation Index and Robberies 2014. Then I add the city line, and I add the robberies as before. And if I do it here, I do the robberies in, in red, breaking my own rule about never never do uh, colors. But I just want to show you in a way that you can see it, that here are those dots over. You can see the same pattern we saw before. So that's the core of Pleth map.
Like, finally, I printed the file. I do a big JPEG. You call it JPEG command. I call it mkemap.jpg. It's 9 by 9, right? And not, you have to tell the computer, well, you tell R and make it inches. And it's high resolution. It's 300, uh, 300 dots per inch. Same commands as before. And then finally, I say dev off means close the device, kills the image. And so then I'll tell it to stop printing. So if I do that, I run it here, it, nothing shows up over here. Instead, it shows up here. And I can preview it. I can see the only change I made was I made the dot size a little bit different because it's going to show up here. So uh, here's my image in high resolution of those robberies and economic deprivation. Now, I could do more. I could add a, a key and stuff. I just chose not to do that for today. But right now, what we've done is we've opened up different shape files using uh, using R. We were able to make a choropleth map. We are able to change the projection. And at the end, we are able to make a map that was just as good as something in GIS.